Welcome back everyone. Let's take a close look at the Statue of Liberty's inside in this video. We'll quickly go over the statue's background, construction process, and inside access points. Even though the statue's full name is Liberty Enlightening the World, it is more commonly referred to as the Statue of Liberty. It was a gift from the French people to the United States in 1886. France is located exactly here, while the United States is located over here, if we zoom in on Europe. On the East Coast, we have the Statue of Liberty. You can see the states of New York and New Jersey if we zoom in on this area. The Upper Bay, also referred to as the New York Harbor, is located directly between the two states. On Liberty Island, you may find the Statue of Liberty. If we zoom out once more, you can see Manhattan and all of its iconic New York structures. Another well-liked tourist location is Governors Island, and just here lies Ellis Island, where many immigrants arrived in the United States between 1892 and 1954. One of the first sights that immigrants arriving in the United States would witness as boats sailed into the harbor would be the Statue of Liberty. Freedom has come to be represented by the Statue of Liberty. She is holding a torch in her right hand and a tablet with the date of the Declaration of Independence written in Roman numerals in her left hand. A broken shackle and chain is one object that is hidden from view from the ground. This is intended to represent the abolition of slavery. 46 meters is how tall the statue is. It is 93 meters tall when measured vertically. That is roughly the height of a 20-story structure. A person's size is shown here in relation to the statue's big toe. It was the tallest statue when it was finished in 1886, but the Statue of Unity in India now holds that distinction. Copper is used to construct the Statue of Liberty. That's right, it used to resemble a penny in color. The metal was gradually oxidized by the air and rain over the course of only 20 years, turning it green. The copper metal is only 2.4 millimeters thick. The thickness of two American coins is less than that. A statue this large requires a lot of planning, which is why it was constructed in sections. Frederick August Bartholdi, a French artist, created the statue. He started by sculpting the model in clay. Its height was only 1.2 meters. This height is a little shorter than the usual adult. Then, a plaster replica that was twice as huge would be created. The following iteration would be significantly larger. The statue's actual size is one quarter of this. Bartholdi would be able to further refine the statue's details at each level of enlargement. It had to be constructed in sections for the full-size version to fit inside the workshop. The finished statue's head was once put on exhibit in France while the right arm and torch were in the United States in order to raise money. Each of these had a pay-to-climb option for visitors. How then can we transfer the statue from its plaster model to its completed copper version? Well, the finished product was made of copper sheets. Repoussé was the technique they employed. Here is how it goes. They would make a wooden mold right next to the full-size plaster replica of the statue using fragments from it. The copper pieces would then be shaped with this. They were hammered into position until they took on the contours of the wooden mold. After that, iron straps were used to support the copper on the interior. We now possess a finished component of the Statue of Liberty. These fragments can never support their own weight on their own. Gustav Eiffel created the supporting structure that it needs. You might be familiar with his name. A short time later, he would assist in the construction of Paris, France's Eiffel Tower. At the exact center of the Statue of Liberty is an iron pylon. This could be compared to the Statue of Liberty's spine. The statue's copper components were then supported by smaller support beams that were erected around it. The statue's structure would enable it to swing in the wind up to 12 centimeters at its highest point. The construction of all of this began in Paris, France, and lasted close to 10 years. After it was finished, it was disassembled into 350 distinct parts. All of this was transported to the United States by ocean shipping. Reassembling the statue on top of the pedestal took another four months. The pedestal was paid for by the United States, but the French paid for the monument itself. 
Bedloe's Island was the name of the island when the statue was completed in 1886. Today, it is known as Liberty Island. Over the years, the Statue of Liberty has undergone a few restorations. The torch was one of these upgrades. It was broken, and water was dripping out of it. A replacement was made in the 1980s. There is still a display of the original torch. Later on in the video, I'll demonstrate where. The only way to get to Liberty Island is by ferry, unless you're a particularly strong swimmer, which I don't advise. Liberty State Park in New Jersey and the Battery on the southern tip of Manhattan are the two locations from which ferries depart. Approximate travel time to Liberty Island is 15 minutes. A little less than 15 acres of land make up the island. The information center, a cafe, a bookstore, and a gift shop are all located in Flagpole Plaza. The Statue of Liberty Museum is located here. It was just inaugurated in 2019, so it's still quite fresh. To reach the statue, we descend this route. There are many places to explore here. In this manner, you are able to view the statue closely from any position. The statue's base has the appearance of a star. These are the remains of Fort Wood, a former military installation. In the early 1800s, it was in use, but today it serves as the Statue of Liberty's base. The pedestal refers to this component. You can go anywhere on top of the statue's base and all the way up to the observation deck if you purchase a pedestal ticket. You must purchase a ticket to ascend all the way to the monument's crown if you wish to enter the statue. These tickets are a little more difficult to obtain. Typically, reservations must be made a few weeks or even months in advance. You can still visit the island, but no one from the general public is allowed inside the pedestal or statue due of the pandemic. Hopefully, that will soon change. We'll enter from here to access the statues inside. The centennial doors are what they are known as. Keep take mind that a pedestal ticket is required to enter. To access the pedestal lobby, enter here. Here in the middle used to be where the Statue of Liberty's first torch stood. The torch was moved there when the museum opened in 2019. The pedestal lobby is now once more completely open. The old museum used to be in this location, but now the majority of its contents have been transferred to the new museum. It's time to climb up to the pedestal summit now. You have two choices. There are stairs or an elevator nearby. The pedestal's pinnacle is reached after 192 steps. Inside, you can see both the upward-facing stairs and the downward-facing stairs. Inside the pedestal, there are seven floors. So, from 1P to 2P and all the way to 7P, the pinnacle, this is. You can step outside and see the surroundings on level 3P, and the official observation deck is on level 6P. Either from here or from here, you can exit. You'll have a good 360-degree view of the harbor once you're outside. Go to level 7P if you have a ticket to ascend to the crown. This is where you begin the ascent to the statue's peak. The double helix stairway has two directions, one for ascending and the other for descending. The midsection of the support structure is perfectly accommodated by these steps. There isn't much space on here, and I hope you don't have a fear of heights. There are a few resting areas if you feel tired. Additionally, the statue has an emergency elevator that is not intended for general public use, just in case. It can stop at a handful of the platforms along the spiral stairway and only holds three people. You will be able to view the metal support structure for the statue as you ascend. Even the individual waves in the statue's robe are visible. The spiral staircase's summit is finally reached. The crown refers to this region. There can only be so many people up here at once. The harbor may be seen clearly from the windows in this location. On the crown, there are a total of 25 windows. Even the individual hair patterns of the statue are visible on the inside. You'll also see some lights on the back that will turn on at night. As soon as you're done up here, you can begin down the opposite side of the double helix stairway. Many people inquire about the torch. The statue was harmed by an explosion in New York Harbor in 1916. They never allowed the public access to the torch again after that. 
workers and maintenance must still occasionally ascend the torch. The gate leading to the arm is visible just at the statue's neck. After passing through here, a tall ladder climbs the arm. Not the simplest ascent either. Then climb up another ladder until you reach the top, where there is a tiny entrance that leads to the free air. Therefore, it is hoped that COVID limitations will continue to loosen and that visitors will once more be able to enter the statue. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more facts videos if you liked our video.